that our sixth day, right? So in the previous class, we studied about the term what is called as productions. And uh, what are the different types of productions? What are the component of the productions? Then, uh, then after that, uh, we also we know uh, that uh, how the certain productions to be defined and long run production to be defined. Then also we know what is the general meaning of your fixed uh, factor, variable factor, right? And both in economic sense as well as the managerial sense we also we study all these things uh, we proceed with the certain production functions we define it also explain different type of assumptions of it thereafter we have to move to the table and figure so we are inside the table and figure right now it is sharing the slide to start with the table how to elaborating the term certain production functions with the help of the table as well as the uh, graph Thereafter, we have to move to the long run production functions. Let's just start with sharing my slide to be here. <coughs> right. Okay. So, just a minute. Just a minute, just a minute. Some problem to be occurred to my thesis. Okay. Is it visible? Okay, that's right, it's visible. Now we have to start here. Uh, just a minute. Just a minute. Yes. Good morning. Right. I will share one second because some problem to be there. Just a minute. What happened to? Okay, that's it. So here is the table to, to almost all of you. And we start with this table, explaining the concept of the table. In the last class, we know the what is the definitions of the law of variable proportion. And why it is called the law of variable proportion? It is so because the existence of the some fixed factor and only one variable factor to be there. And the law tells us when the variable factors are increases market when the variable factors are increases one by one it will increases when the variable factors are increases along with the fixed factor fixed factor to be remains fixed right fixed factor to be remains fixed here i take into account the fixed factor as land the 10 acres of the land we have to take into account and the variable factor is to be your labor and labor means the working hour and it will be increased by one by one day right it will increase by one by one day. And when the variable factors are increases along with the fixed factor, here the variable factors have to be homogeneous. Homogeneous means identical in nature. That means all the cultivative power of each and every laborer to be remain the same. Right? The cultivating power or it is the, the capacity to produce the things of each and every labor to be remain the same. Laborer to be remain the same. Right? Therefore, that is called the homogeneous. And we have to change in the fixed proportion. That means we have to increase it one by one. When the variable factors are increases along with the fixed factor, then what happened to the total product? Total product, mark the total product. It initially increases. It will increase by 10. Thereafter, it is increased by 12. Then thereafter, it is increased by 14. Then you can find thereafter, it is increases by 16. Right? It increases at an increasing rate. So up to this to this, what you find total product is increases at an increasing rate. And after that, when the variable factor further increases along with the fixed factor, total product increases 
what do you find? Here it is increases by 16, right? Thereafter, what do you find to be here? It is increases by 14. That means it start decreasing, right? Then we, what do you find? That it is increases at a diminishing rate up to this. It is increases at a diminishing rate, right? That means increase, uh, it decreases by six, so 14, then 10, then 4, then 2, then 0. It is increases initially increases at an increasing rate. Thereafter, it increases at a diminishing rate, right? And it reaches its maximum point, corresponding to the tenth level of your, let's say, ninth level of your uh, variable factor. We find the total product becomes maximum, right? This is the total product become maximum. And thereafter, when further we increase the variable factor, what you find, it becomes diminishes. That means total product decreases. So, so the slope of the total product is called the marginal product. As the marginal, that marginal product reflects how much it will increase in the total product. Because the marginal product can be defined as to be addition made to the total product by using one more extra unit of variable factor. When we add one more extra unit of variable factor, how much the total product to be increases that to be represented by marginal product. So it will increase by 10, then increase by 12 and so on. So what you find the marginal product will continuously increases up to this point, right? Up to this point, marginal product will increases, right? And thereafter, what you find marginal product start decreasing and it is moved to zero. And when it will be zero, now corresponding to the maximum part of the total product, right? So when it increases at an increasing rate, marginal product increases. When total increases at a diminishing rate, marginal falls. And thereafter, when marginal becomes maximum, total becomes zero. When total falls, marginal becomes negative. And what about the average product? Average product is to be also be, first of all, it is increases. Right? And how it will be calculated? The total product divided by the variable factor. 10 divided by 1, 22 divided by 2, 36 divided by 3, and so on. So the total product divided by the variable factor is called as the marginal product. And average product, this particular total product divided by variable factor is called the average product. And that average product or average productivity initially increases, increases market, it is increases up to this particular point. So average product continuously increases. And if the hook of first falls, first marginal falls, thereafter average falls. Average falls here, but marginal falls because the definitions also tells us when the variable factors are increases along with the fixed factor, first marginal, then after that average productivity falls. That is another definition, right? And when average product, okay, when average product reaches its maximum point, marginal must be equal to the average product, right? And when average starts falls, when average starts falls, then we find marginal lie below the average market. Marginal is to be 10, average is to be 12.6, marginal is 4, average is this. Prior to that, we can find that marginal is greater than the average. Marginal is greater than the average. But after that, when it is fall, marginal becomes lie below the average. Okay. And that thing also be explained with the help of the figure we here. Market the figure. The total increases in this particular phase, total product. This is the total product, right? On the vertical axis, it is represented as the total product. On the horizontal axis, we take into account the variable factor, that is your labor, right? When the variable factors are increases, when the variable factors are increases, initially total product increases at an increasing rate, then total product increases at a diminishing rate, and when it reaches its maximum level, right? It reaches its maximum level thereafter it falls right so the slope of the total product is represented as the marginal product when total increases in increasing rate marginal this is the black line is the marginal product this marginal to be increases when it is increases a diminishing rate marginal falls when it is maximum marginal becomes zero right corresponding to this is zero when total falls marginal becomes negative in the bottom part of the axis also be in the bottom part of the figure on the uh, your horizontal axis of the labor but on the vertical axis we treat 
marginal product and the average product both to be mentioned on the vertical axis okay then and another the things which is to be reflected from the table that the who comes first falls first marginal falls first of all the marginal falls there are to the average falls here is the maximum point of your marginal and here is the maximum point of your average so first marginal falls there are to average falls and when marginal lie above the average average continuously increases market this black curve that the marginal product curve it will lies above the average product up to this particular point it's dense and corresponding to that situations marginal continuously increases when mar average starts falls marginal lie below it right and when total falls marginal becomes negative and another things while you trace the figure average product never touches this axis it is asymptotical to this axis it is to be asymptotical to the axis never this average product curve to be touches this particular variable axis okay now back to the table once again inside the table when marginal product remember when marginal product is to be greater than the average product market up to this marginal is to be greater than the average right when marginal is greater than the average it is called as the increasing returns when marginal lie below the average is called the diminishing returns when marginal becomes negative it's called as the negative returns so the law of variable proportion for the segregated in three stages law of increasing returns law of diminishing returns law of negative returns so increasing return of the and up to the situations when marginal is lie above the average marginal product to recall is to lie above the average product to recall or marginal product lies above the average product that is called the increasing returns and second when marginal is to be lies below the average right from that particular point of the maximum point of a marginal average product till the marginal becomes zero up to that situation it is called as the law of diminishing returns it is continuously diminishes right and there are two when total falls or marginal becomes negative that is called the negative returns so the law of variable proportion for the split into three stages law of increasing returns law of diminishing returns law of negative returns that also we can mark with this particular figure up to this the maximum point of the marginal product right as this called the average product sorry marginal product of the uh, the maximum point of the average product it is called as the stage 1 that is called the law of increasing returns and in between the that particular maximum point to the zero of your marginal product it is called the law of diminishing returns and after that it is called the law of negative returns right increasing returns and it is returns to a variable factor that we remember because it is we are inside the term law of variable proportion output increases due to the variable factor right because we know that your output it is a functions it is a functions of your labor and capital the labor and capital what we assume the capital to be fixed throughout the production process that means here i have in this example in your table we take into account 10 acres of land that is remains fixed it should not be altered only the variable factor to be changes but the variable factor labor is a variable factor and return takes place because of the variable factor increasing returns means returns to the variable factor diminishing returns means diminishing returns it returns to a variable factor and the third stage negative returns will be there okay after knowing the term what is the law of variable proportions how it explain with the help of your increasing i mean graph as well as the table let's say we further elaborating those things once again here is the three stages of the production functions in the chart trend stage 1 it is called the law of increasing returns or the stage of increasing returns why it is so average product increasing okay continuously this particular stage marginal product is greater than the average product or marginal product lies above the average product up to the point s that is the up to the maximum point of your average product mark the point up to the point s this is the s point this is the s point right where it is the maximum right up to the s point 
and the total product of stats is to be exist. Stage one is to be exist. Then each of the uh, total product curve is also be given to you. This is the vertical below that one, and this is the maximum of your average product that you have to remember. Then move to the second stage. In the second stage, it is called the stage of diminishing returns, and returns to a variable factor. Remember it. It is not returns to scale. Scale to be occur in the long run, not in the short run. Here, both average product and marginal product it will be false. They are the decreasing, but marginal is to be positive. Lies below the average product, right? It always lies below the average product. The portion of the total product curve it will be increases and diminishing it. And at the end of the second stage, total product becomes maximum. At the end of the second stage, total product become maximum, marginal becomes zero, and average continuously falls. And when we enter into the third stage, total falls, marginal becomes negative, average continuously falls. Total product diminishes, marginal product becomes negative, and total product, the portions of the total product curve which lies to the right of the point J, is representing this stage. The right of this point in the sense, right of this particular point J, maximum point of the total product, right? So right of this particular point, after reaching the maximum point of the total product, it start decreasing. Therefore, this is called the diminishing, sorry, negative returns. Why it is negative? When marginal falls, it marginal becomes negative. Therefore, it is called the negative returns. Okay. Then after knowing these three stages, then we have to move to the why this particular stage one, two, three is to be occur, and which particular. Suppose you are a rational producer. If you are a producer, then in, on, in particular, which stage we are interested to produce? Whether you are interested to produce in the stage one or stage two and stage three. If it is so, if you choose any particular stage, then why it is so? Why you choose the stage one? Why not second and third? That way we have to take it apart, right? Let's just start with explanations of it. Actually, a rational producer, a rational farm always choose the second stage. He never choose the first and third stage. But question to be arise is why the producer to be always choose in the second stage? Why not in the first and third stage? You can remember that in the first stage, whether back to the table as well as the figure, in the first stage, we can find the marginal product of the variable factor. I mean the fixed factor is negative. Marginal product is the fixed factor to be negative. Why in the stage one the marginal product of the fixed factor is to be negative? Because you are underutilizing the fixed factor. Let's say, for example, uh, you would take considering your study purpose. Suppose in a particular day, you know how much hour you have to study. Minimum may not be 10 hours you are to going to be studying. But is it so? Do you utilizing the exactly the 10 hours? Never. Not, none of you will be studying the 10 hours. That means your fixed factor is not going to be properly utilized. Like so there, that reflect your marks. That reflect your performance in your exam. But if you try to utilizing that particular term, that means those available hours you're going to be increasing, I mean, you apply this, your performance is going to be increased. Right? So in the first stage, in the stage one, the all the fixed factors are not properly applied. This if you take into account in case of a land also be the I take into account the all the 10 acres of the land in the stage one, not all the 10 acres lands are to be applied. This some patch of the land is going to be like this. When the variable factors are increases, then we try to expand, I mean, try to take additional patches of land of that 10 acres of land to produce the product. Therefore, not a single producer it to be observed that the stage one it to be wise for that particular producer. If you take it even the hotel industries also. Suppose if you are the producer of the, providing the services of the hotel industry and you have the four floors are there, and each floor having the 10 rooms are there. And uh, the 10 rooms, if the all the, uh, that means the 10, the four floors and 10 rooms, it's 40 rooms are there. If all the 40 rooms are to be occupied by the different passengers or the, the different, I mean, inhabitants, then you can find that you are to be perfectly utilize your fixed tax. But in the very beginning, initial phase of uh, providing the services, then what you find hardly one room or two room or maximum is five room or six room or the ten room to be utilized. It's not the hun entire hundred percent to be forty rooms are going to be utilized. This. That reflect your hundred percent of the fixed factor is not properly utilized. This, right? So when you try to using it, when the number of customer to be increases, then you're using the more and more number of rooms. Then the fixed factor to be properly utilized, this. and that is possible in case of the second stage, not in the 
cost stage of the production process. Then similarly, why not the producer try to produce in the third stage? Actually, in the third stage, the variable factors, the marginal productivity of the variable factors to be negative. That means if you know the terms too much cook spoil the cook. So in that case, what do you find? If the more number of cooks are there, definitely they will spoil the entire food to be there, right? So the, exactly the same manner, if that the more number of uh, laborers to be used in the production process are necessary, they create different type of disturbances, lockouts, strike, and so on. They gossip to each other. They are un, uh, uh, don't spend the time in the productive purpose. They unnecessarily waste the time and so on. So that means if in the third stage, you can find the marginal productivity of the labor becomes negative. Why? Because then those laborers are not properly utilized. This. If the laborers are going to be properly utilized, then you can find that the production can be increased, which is be possible in the first and second space. In the first stage, you using few amount of labor, so therefore their return is to be less. And in the same manner, in the first stage, fixed pattern are properly utilized. But if you move to the second stage, your labor number of variable factors will increases and fixed factor will optimally utilizes. Therefore, in the second stage, the production is more. But if you move to the third stage, the fixed factor will be overutilized. Here, the fixed factor to be overutilized means the deficits are to be taxed less, obsolences are to be taxed less, right? Here, the productivity power to be reduces, right? And side by side, huge amount of unnecessary labors to be there. So that create a burden on the production process. Therefore, not a rational producer try to produce in the first phase and third phase of the production process. But in the second phase, both of them are to be positive. Marginal product is a fixed factor, as well as the marginal product is a variable factor, both have to be positive. Right? They are declining no doubt, but they are positive. Because you, as a producer, you try to use your variable factor as well as the fixed factor properly. All the input factor must be optimally utilized. It is not utilized optimally in the stage one and stage two. Therefore, always the producer try to introduce in the second stage of the production process. Therefore, the second stage, I mean, this particular law, the law of variable proportion or the certain production functions, also known as law of diminishing returns. Okay. Now the question to bear is why this type of situation occur? Why the stage one is called as the increasing return, stage two to call as the diminishing returns, and stage three is called as the negative returns? That things also comes to your mind. Now, in this case, uh, increasing returns is to be occur. It is so because of the indivisibility of the facts of the productions and specialization of labor. Here, the variable factors have to be properly utilized. Here, the variable factors are going to be properly utilizes as we use our variable factor properly therefore increasing returns to be expressed if you use more and more amount of the fixed factor i mean uh, extensive method of the cultivations then you can find for the production to be increases uh, it is continue up to the full utilization of your fixed factor right therefore it is called the indivisibility of the factor of the production and specialization labor Next comes to the second stage. Why the second stage is called the diminishing returns? It is also it is due to the non-optimal factor of the productions. Okay, non-optimal factor proportions and imperfect elasticity of the substitutions of the factor. You already know the meaning of the elasticity of substitution or elasticity. How to calculate the elasticity, the marginal productivity of labor by the average productivity of the labor. From that we can judge the productivity, whether the productivity increases or decreases. From that particular elasticity, we can observe that the total product no doubt it increases the diminishing rate, but here marginal product, marginal product of the variable factor lies below the average productivity. And due to that, this stage is called as the law of diminishing returns. And it is continued until the maximum point of the total product, uh, that is called the zero level of your marginal product. And thereafter, in the third stage, we know it is called the negative return because total product falls and marginal product becomes negative. As the marginal product of the variable factor to be negative, therefore, the third stage is called as the law of negative returns. Okay, uh, that is the example. No need to explain this example because if people are we, I don't know whether you have the knowledge about the derivative or not. So we have to stop this one and move to the next part. That the long run productions functions as you know in short run 
some of the input factors are fixed and some of the variable factors are to be constant. But in case of your long run, all the input factors are variable. Because as we defined in the very beginning, the Q, it is a function of your labor and capital. Labor and capital. But in short run, we assume capital to be the variable factor. I mean, this is the fixed factor, this is the variable factor. So in order to increase the output, we have to increase the labor. Labor or the variable factor must be increased. Therefore, it is called the law of variable proportions. But what happened to the long run? In the long run, the all the input factors are variable. We already explained those sort of things. And I mean, all the variable factors are the variable. I mean, all the input factors are variable. That is called the change in scale. Okay. So this is called the scale of reductions, change in scale. I mean, in order to increasing the output, we have to increase the scale. The scale of operations must be changes. So due to that, the long run productions function also be known as return to scale. So you have to change the scale. Both input factor must have to be changed. But how are you to depicting it? In order to depict that, we have to know another term, another curve that is called the ISO point. So we have to explain some part of the ISO point, then we have to move into it. So return to scale, it refers to the effect of the scale of relationship, which implies that in long run, output can be increased by changing all the factors at the same or the different proportions. So we have to change the input factor either in the same proportion or in the different proportions. But how are we elaborating it? In order to change this, you have to take one uh, uh, curve that is called the ISO point. Actually, what is that ISO point? ISO point it is otherwise known as the equal product curve. On this axis, we take into account the capital. On this axis, we have to take into account the labor, right? And the ISO point curve will look like this. This is called the ISO point, IQ. What is that ISO point or equal product curve? And in the locus of points, it is a locus of point. You have to take into account different point on it. Let's say I do take a particular point. Sorry, I have to take a particular point. Let's say this is the point A, right? Another point we have to take the equal distance. We have to take in the horizontal axis, right? This is the second point, point B, and you have to take the point. Let's say the point C, right? And in the same manner, we can proceed with the new points again. Let's say the points are A. This is the point A, this is the point B, and this is the point C at the end. So this point shows us the locus of points, which consists of the different combination of the input factor. At the point A, it, produ it produces, let's say I can take into account, it produces 100 unit of output, 100 unit of output by using L1 labor and K1 capital. K1 capital. Similarly, the point B, it uses, either you can use L2 labor or K2 capital or K2 capital to producing the same 100 unit of output. If you take the point C here, we take into account the K3 and L3. K3 and L3, it also will produce the same amount of output. So it is the locus of points which produce the equal amount of output, right? Therefore, it is called the ISO point or it is called the equal product curve also. Every point on the ISO point provide the same output, but the different combination of the input factors, different combination of the input factors. And here we changes both the terms. What uh, I mean, so your labor and the capital to be changes. It's not we really change only the labor, like in the short term. It has to change the, all the things. And uh, here, the slope of the ISO point, the slope of the ISO point, it will be represented as the marginal rate of technical substitutions, marginal rate of technical substitution labor for capital. And that always diminishes. Why it diminishes? Because of the convex shape of it. Market. Initially at the point A, it uses L1 labor K1 capital. But if you try to produce at this particular point, that means if you try to increasing one additional unit of labor, he may sacrifice some amount of the capital. That is called the marginal rate of substitution. You can substitute capital for labor. 
and initially how much is substituted if we try to produce the at the point c that means you use the more labor and further you have to going to be sacrificed less unit of capital okay initial how much unit of capital to be sacrificed this much but right now this much of capital is sacrificed and that is to be diminished that sacrifice of the marginal rate of substitution x for y must be diminished and that the concept of your isa point why it is convex type of set right and similarly higher isa point if you move to the higher isa point it produces higher amount of output and so on then the last number of properties also there we should not enter into that part but you have to you know to elaborate in the term what is called the uh, return to scale of the long run production function definitely are using the term what is called the isa point okay now here mark the concept to be that as you know in case of your long run all the input factors are variable both labor as well as the capital they are to be variable nothing going to be fixed in short run we know capital to be fixed but here nothing going to be fixed if the labor and capital to be increases by p times let's say labor increases by p times capital also increases by p times then output increases by z times now compare p and z right we have to comparing the p time and z time if p and z are same it is called the constant return to scale mark the last point if the p and z at the same we can say it is called the constant return to scale if the return if the z is more than the p then it is called, called the increasing return to scale it is called the initially you know in the short run it is increasing return but here it is increasing returns to scale we have to occur the term scale to be here because we have to change the change in scale of operations similarly in case of your long run if your z is to be less than p then in that case we can say it is called the diminishing return to scale so what is the proportion of the changes in the input as compared to the output that is called as the return to scale we have to comparing the result. that means increasing returns to the out what is the changes in the output to the changes in the input factor that ratio have to take if the ratio is to be greater than 1 we can say increasing return if that ratio is to be less than 1 we can say the diminishing return if it is equals to 1 we can say it is called the constant return to scale so there are the three type of return to scale like in case of your short run there are three stages are there stage 1 2 and 3 increasing return to scale diminishing return to scale i sorry increasing returns to be a factor diminishing return to be a factor and negative returns to be a factor but in long run there is no negative return to scale because in the long run we are all dead we should not wait for what happened to the producer in the long run right when the production start decreasing then he may shut down its production process or he may quit or start new production process to react okay so therefore there is no such negative return to scale occur in long run right so here we have to take into account the what is the proportion of the z and p if p to be treated as the, i mean the factored output then the new level of output can be elaborated with this right so either you can take into account p to the power q or you can take into account this way you can express it this way but remember we have to take if the input factor and the output factor the proportion of the changes if they are same then is called the homogeneous production functions if it is a homogeneous of the degree 1 then you can say it is called as the linear homogeneous production functions okay let's say we take into account an example uh, the best example is called the cobb douglas production functions cd production functions the cobb douglas production functions what is that production function the cd explain its production functions as q it is a function of like it will be written as q equals to a l to the power alpha k to the power beta a into l to the power alpha k to the power beta right this is called the cobb douglas production functions where alpha plus beta is a power set there alpha plus beta must be equal to 1 in case of a linear production functions right so that is to be treated as a homogeneous production functions okay now if the ratio as i already suggested you the ratio if it is a homogeneity of the degree 1 then it is called the constant return to scale 
the p the power of v is to be the p is called as the degree of homogeneity if it is one is called the constant it under scale let's tell you one is the degree one linear homogeneous production function if it is one it's called the linear homogeneous production functions if it is the degree is to be more than one if the return is much more than what the input factor means how much effort you have to provide it and what is the amount of the returns to be there if the return is more than your effort then this called the input the return if the return is less than your effort then in that case is called the diminished return to scale okay it's a very simple concept increasing return to scale constant return to scale and diminishing return to scale so again we should we have to suppress this sort of things because if people may not be know the term what is called as the derivatives and how to utilize the term derivative we have to skip this things now uh yes this is the concept what we say initially to be elaborating to you while you the term explain, explain the law of return to scale we have to take into account the isoquants right equal production curve that is called the isoquant as i cited in the two or uh, three slides before so in the long run if all the input factors are variable and we are changing it that is called the isoquant or the equal product curve how to defining it the combination of the input factors that produce the same level of output each and every point on the isoquant it produces the same level of output it is also been known as the productions isoquant or equal product curve right and the firm will be combined the, i mean the combination of the two input factor to producing that particular input factor then what is the economic region of the productions functions economic region in the productions functions means and which particular zone the producer producer going to be the producers if we back to the short run in short run you say that the producer always produce in the second stage not in the first stage not in the third stage why is the producers in the second stage because in the first stage marginal product is a fixed factor that is the capital is to be negative but in the last stage marginal product is a variable factor that is labor is to be negative but in the middle stage the marginal product is a fixed factor and variable factor both are to be negative but how you to depicting it with the help of the isoquant in order to depict it the isoquant mark it here that is called the the uh, ridge ridge line to be that here it be the upper ridge line and this the lower ridge line the before that it is called the stage 1 in between is called the stage 2 after that it's called the stage 3 right stage 1 to be occur ever the point i mean that this upper ridge line a and this is called the stage 1 here the marginal productivity of your capital becomes negative marginal product of capital becomes negative or less than zero but in the third stage right side of the lower ridge line then it is called as the the marginal productivity of labor to be negative marginal productivity of labor to be negative but in between the inside the ridge line the marginal productivity of both your labor as your capital marginal productivity of your labor and capital both have to be and your capital both have to be positive right therefore always the producer try to produce in the second stage right so that is the concept of your short run production function but how you have to enter, we are interested in the long run right in the long run how you have to elaborating the term increasing return to scale diminishing return to scale and your that is called the constant return to scale in order to end, enter into that let's start with the figure as well as the table So the other things, increasing return to scale, diminishing return to scale, and constant return to scale. We have to elaborating these sort of things with the help of the table. Let's say the table starts like this. Again, we have to same same thing. The increasing return and diminishing return. This is the scale, right? Here, we have to take into account different combinations are there, labor and capital, right? Let's start with the simple one. We have to using a single labor and single capital. right how much things that you have to going to be producing you have to if we take into account the term let's say uh, if you uh, take into account the, the scale of operation on this one this is called the scale of operations right scale of operation means the combination of the different input factor and this is your total product and the next one is the marginal productivity right if you take the scale in the first scale you using single labor and single capital one unit of labor and one unit of capital you produces 
the total product will be the how much? It is four. Now, what is the value of the marginal product? The marginal product is also be the four because initially it is zero. Now it will increase to the four. If you increase the input factor twice, twice in the sense labor increases two times, capital also be increases two times. If you increase the labor and capital two times, what happened to the output? Total product increases more than two times. Actually, it is the H. Total product will be H. If with the two times means it will be H. But it will increases to the 10. That means total product increases more than two times. Therefore, it is called the increasing returns. When the labor and capital increases at a constant proportion, output increases more than that constant proportion then in that case it is called the increasing return to scale okay similar in the other way uh, you are interested to produce the two times of initial output initial output is there four right now you try to producing the eight then how much of labor and capital will be required to produce the eight inch of output Obviously, I have to use less than two unit of labor and less than two unit of capital. If you use the two unit of labor and two unit of capital, it produces 10. But our target, if you produce try to produce the eight unit of output, obviously, you have to use less than two times of labor and less than two times of capital to produce the two unit of output or two times of initial output. Similarly, if you take the uh, take the things that be if the labor and capital to be increases three times, right? Output increases how many times? And in that pattern we have to continue. In that pattern we have to continue. If we find labor to be increases, labor and capital increases how many times? With the one by one we have to increase the capital and labor how much it will increase? And this increasing component it will be represented by the marginal product. If the marginal product it continuously increases, then we can say increasing returns. If the marginal product will remain constant, it's called the constant returns. If the marginal product should be on diminishing, then it is called the diminishing returns. Because you know from the first stage also be law of variable proportion, the first law of certain production function, the producer. Uh, judgment can be expressed, the productivity can be expressed, whether it is increasing return, diminishing returns, or negative returns from the marginal product itself. If the marginal product lies above the average product, even back to the certain, if the marginal product lies above the average product, then in that case, increasing return, when marginal product lies below the average product, diminishing return, when marginal product negative, is called the negative return. Exactly the same way, no? considering the marginal productivity, we can judge the term whether it is the increasing return to scale or constant return to scale or the diminishing return to scale. But only one difference is that in such run, we take into account one fixed one fixed factor and one variable factor. That is a capital to be fixed and labor to be variable. Output to be changes due to the change in the variable factor that is labor. But in this case, we have to change both the labor as well as the capital to just the marginal productivity, whether it increases or it decreases. If it is to be increased at an increasing rate, if it is increases market in the last color, the marginal productivity, if it is increases continuously, we can say it is called the increasing returns. If it is it remains constant, it's called the constant return to scale. If it is false continuously, we can say it is called the diminishing return to scale. Okay. Now we try to explain with the help of the marginal productivity curve. Here is the marginal productivity. On the horizontal axis, we take into account the scale of operations. On the vertical axis, we take the term marginal productivity. And up to this particular point, what you find, this amount of the scale, let's say we take the scale one, the marginal productivity continuously increases, therefore it is called the increasing returns. And in between scale one to the scale two, what you find, the marginal productivity is to be remains constant. Each and every phase you can find the constant. This is the same constant amount of output. We back to the table, it is 10. Everywhere it is a 10. Mark it here. It's 10. Initialize the it is increases. But right now it is the 10. Right? Thereafter, after S2, after the scale up operation of S2, marginal productivity will fall. Therefore, it is called the law of diminishing returns. 
it is called the constant return to scale it is called the increasing return to scale in this part we can elaborating it or we can explain with the help of your iso points so you already know what is the figure of the iso point in which with the iso point it will trace and what is the slope of the iso point or the equal product curve that is called the diminishing marginal rate of substitution and what is the meaning of the marginal rate of substitution also we discuss it right we have to explain all these three stages of your long run production functions with the help of your iso points let's start with this particular figure here we have to take the horizontal axis of the labor and the vertical axis the mesh hour at capital that okay now the iso point to be look like this right just a minute some problem to be occur i think so right okay so there the three iso points are there we have to take into account iso point 1 iso point 2 and iso point 3 and the higher iso point provide the higher amount of output okay as compared to the lower iso point why because we are using more unit of input factors to be that now we have to trace the scale of operations the oa is the scale line oa is the scale line initially we use a term two unit of capital and five unit of labor if you take labor and capital and this is your output initially the existence of the two labor and five capital to produce 10 output okay now if we increase the labor two times and capital also be two times so labor increases two to four two times capital increases two times five to ten then what is the output actually output moves to the point 30 output increases to the 30 then what is the change in the productivity productivity increases three times if you increase the labor and capital two times then output increases more than two times more than two times therefore it is called as the increasing returns to scale okay in another way if we increase the labor i mean if our target it to the output we increases the two times let's say my target is the increase the output to the 20 then obviously if it will move to the 10 to the 20 then how much of labor to be required and how much of capital to be required we have to use less than two unit of labor and less than two unit of capital okay less than two times of labor and less than two times of capital you have to use to produce the 20 unit of output that is called as the law of increasing returns okay and here the distance between successive iso point if you have to take into account the first iso point is 10 and next is to be the 30 due to the changes in the input factor two times then the distance market how much distance to be expected and this is the how much distance with it the distance continuously increases the distance continuously increases in case of increasing return to scale now move to the next constant return to scale i take the three iso points 10 20 and 30 and we take the scale line to be that here once again i write the term comes to be labor and capital this is your output initially you use two labor five capital to produce the 10 unit of output this is the initial situations at here right if we increase the two times of labor i mean two to four and capital to two times that is called the one to i mean five to ten right two times of labor and two times of capital then what happened to the output output increases to 20 so as the output increases to the 20 that's called the constant return to scale that means output increases two times, input also increases by two times. So that the same proportion, if it is a constant proportion, we can say it is a constant return to scale. And what is the distance? We can mark it the distance to be remain the same. If you increase that three times, three times of capital and three times of labor, output also may increase exactly three times. If it is increases the three times, let's say the two to three, and if it is increases the five to fifteen right it is a 5 to 15 it is a 6 right 2 to 6 3 times of labor and 3 times of capital and output you can find it also be increases exactly 3 times that's called the constant return to scale the distance between consecutive successive consecutive isoquants are remain the same 
now we have to move to the next top. The next is to be your diminishing return to scale. In the same pattern, we take into account horizontal axis labor and vertical axis capital. We take into account three ISO points are there, 10, 20, and 30. Now, trace the scale line OA, and we have to move to the table. Here is the labor capital. Always we have to figure with the table, right? Here's the labor capital and output. Here is the two labors and five capital. Initially, we produce 10 unit of output. This is the initial situation. Now, what happened? Suppose we have to increase the two times of labor and two times of capital. Increase the labor two times, increases the capital two times. Then what happened to the, here it increases uh, how many times? Four times, right? If it is increases the four times, then it becomes a, that is called the eight and 20, let's say. In the figure, we have to move to the 11 in the figure. If it is the four times to increases, we know it is increases by four times. Input factor increases four times and how much output will increases? Output not increases by four times, rather output increases only 30. So output increases only three times. So the output increases less than how much input factor we use. Okay. Now, if you target it, the reverse part of it, reverse part in the sense, suppose my target to produce, let's say, labor, labor I mean, output is the four times, that means the 40, because we know labor to be increases by two, four times, capital to be increases by four times. If my target, the output also be increases by four times, then how much of labor and capital to be increased? Definitely the ISO point to be here, right? That is to be 40, right? We have to use more than four times of labor and more than four times of capital to moving to that particular point, okay? So that is called the in diminishing return to scale because we required more input to reaching to that particular target. Therefore, it is called the diminishing return to scale. And what is the distance between successive consecutive ISO point? It is decreases, right? So this is the way we have to explain the increasing return to scale, constant return to scale, and diminishing return to scale. Now, if you put uh, the things that to be that, let's say, if you put all the things in a single diagram to be that, let's say I have to be trace it here, right? And we take into account, this is the scale line to be that. And remember, initially we have to draw the ISO point in such a way that distance to be diminishes. Thereafter, distance to be remain the same. Thereafter, the distance to be increases. In that pattern, you have to trace your ISO point. Initially, when you trace the ISO point like this, the distance to be diminishes. Then you have to take the ISO point where the distance to be remains constant, right? Then you have to take the ISO point where distance to be increases, right? So in that case, this is called the increasing return to scale, constant return to scale, and diminishing return to scale. That's why we have to elaborate the term return to scale. Now, move to how we have to explain the second stage of the long run production function. The second stage of the long run production function, which is called as the uh, constant return to scale, the best example of that constant return to scale is called the linear homogeneous production functions. And that will be elaborated with the help of the Cobb Douglas production functions. As I said in the very beginning, alpha, beta, instead of alpha, beta, you take into account A and B. So Cobb Douglas production function, Q equals to A, L to the power uh, B, and K to the power E. When A plus B, it should be equals to one. If you add A plus B, it should be equals to one. Therefore, it is called the linear homogeneous production function. If you take the log both sides, then it becomes log Q that equals to A log A, and you can apply the formula. You know the term log, uh, log A into B formula, log A plus log B. Okay, and the power function formula log A to the base uh, to the power B means B log A. In that part, and we have to elaborating it. Okay, this is the example of your certain product. I mean, sorry, a uh, second stage of the long run production functions. That is called the Cobb Douglas production functions. Okay, now we have to of i mean so comparing both short run as well as the long run production functions then we have to wind up the system in the short run production function and the long run production function we know what is the meaning of short run what is the meaning of the long run and 
uh, how it does stage one, two, three to be occurring the uh, in certain production function, and in the same manner, increasing constant and diminishing return to scale to be occurring the long term also. So we have to segregate it. Let's start with the certain. In certain, it is called the loss of returns and returns to a variable factor. It is called the returns to scale because we have to change the scale. In certain, it is a certain production function. This is called the long run production function. Obviously, this is a very simple concept. Certain and long term. Here, only one factor is the variable. Other things to be remains constant. Here, all the input factors are variable. Nothing going to be fixed. Almost all the input factors are to be going to be variable. Okay. Next, the factors of production. It is the factor proportion that to be changed. Factor proportion to be changed. That to be changed in the fixed proportion. That you remember. But here, factor proportion are not changed. Here, the scale going to be changed. Therefore, it is called the return to scale. Now, the law is applicable when the variable factor must be used in the fixed proportion. Right, variable factor must be increases in the fixed proportion, but here it will be increased in the different proportion. But the law does apply when the factor must be used in the fixed proportion. The both the inputs, that means both labor and capital, it will increases. In case of your uh, here, in case of your certain production function, if you take into account your it is the function of your labor and capital, we have to use only the labor to be changes. But in case of your long run, uh, here we know the term labor and capital. Both labor and capital going to be increased because that is called the change in step. And lastly, increasing returns are to be occurred due to the indivisibility of the factors of the production, specializations of labor, diminishing return occur due to the non-optimal factors of production, and imperfect elasticity of substitution and the negative returns to be occurred due to the marginal productivity of variable factor becomes negative. But what is that in that for your long run? In the long run, increasing return to scale occur due to the economy of scale, diminishing return occur due to the uh, diseconomy of scale. Now the concept is that what is economy of scale, what is diseconomy of scale? That thing we have to cover in the coming class. Okay, what is the economy of scale? What is the diseconomy of scale? These things we have to cover, right, in the coming class, right? So that's all for today. In the coming class, we have to uh, starting with the term: what is economy of scale? What is diseconomy of scale? And what are the factor responsible behind it, right? And what are the component of it? Also, we individually have to segregating the term: what is economies? What is internal economies? What is external economies? And similarly, what is internal diseconomies and what is external diseconomies and why that occur in short and long run, specifically in the long run, and that too in the first stage, second stage, and third stage. We have to segregate that and we have to proceed for the lab lessons. So that's all for today. Thank you. Thank you all.